In the preceding lessons, we looked at how large deformation changes the stiffness of a system and in turn makes the response non-linear. In this lesson, we'll study some of the practical applications and learn in detail about each of the geometric non-linearities. We will discuss four examples with each of them dominated by at least one of the geometric non-linearities. This list of examples include a fishing rod which experiences change in load due to shape changes, a drive shaft that undergoes large rotation, the tuning of guitar strings that changes the frequencies of notes due to stress stiffening, and finally fan blade that experiences a combination of both stress stiffening and spin softening. Now, let's go fishing. Fishing is a favorite outdoor activity for some people and it is the livelihood of others. Those who pursue this as a hobby commonly use a fishing pole, which is a tall slender structure with a fishing reel and spool of fishing line on the other end. It's held on one end by the person and the bait is tied to the other end and thrown into the water body. When a fish takes the bait, the spool is winded back to pull the fish out of the water. When the fish is out of the water, the weight of the fish creates a movement that bends the fishing pole. The magnitude of this movement is nothing but the product of the pole length and the weight of the fish. As mentioned earlier, the fishing pole is a tall slender structure and it acts like a cantilever beam under the influence of fish weight. If the weight of the fish is W and the length of the fishing pole is L, then the deflection of the pole at the tip is given by this relation. When the length of the pole remains unchanged, then we can see that this relationship reduces to a linear function between the tip deflection and the weight of the fish. But the length of the pole does not remain constant if there's even slightest deflection. But at very small deflections, the change in length is negligible and this relationship is still valid. But this relation is no longer valid if this change in length is large and is not linear either. Now let's use simulations to calculate this relation using both small and large deformation formulation. In case of small deformation, we get a linear response between the reaction force and the tip reflection, which agrees with what we discussed earlier. Now, if we solve the same problem using large deformation, then response is non-linear. In fact, it's tangential to the small deformation response, meaning that at very small deformations, both the responses are nearly the same but their difference increases at large deformations. This example provides a very good case of why a changing shape must be accounted for in studying a structure's response. Now let's move on to the second example, which is a drive shaft. Drive shafts are used in many applications in transferring power or rotation from one component to another. These are commonly seen in automobiles, where the power is transferred from the engine to the wheels. Also, if you have one of the motorized sit-stand desks, then you may lean over and find a drive shaft. If you see one of these in function, you'll notice that it undergoes large rotation and it may experience some shear in this process. Now, let's take a cross-section of this shaft and observe how it deforms. Let's take a point on its surface and monitor its motion. If the radius of the shaft is r and if it shears by an angle theta, then the point assumes a new position r cos theta, r sin theta. Suppose we linearize these equations by applying small rotations assumptions, in which case the coordinates of this point change to r comma r theta. If you notice this new position, it's outside the perimeter of the shaft cross-section. So if you apply this to other points on the surface, then it appears 
that the shaft cross section grew radially outward which is not physical so you can see that when a structure undergoes large rotation it's important that we use large deformation formulation to calculate the system response let's simulate this scenario on a simple shaft and apply both small and large deformation formulation we can see from these animations that the small deformation is resulting in a spurious radial growth whereas large deformation formulation does not suffer from such an issue make note of this important recommendation while performing structural analysis speaking of note let's move on to our next example which is a guitar string the musical notes of a guitar or any other string instrument are result of the way the string vibrates and the vibration of a string depends on how stiff the guitar string is a guitarist always checks the notes and adjusts the stress in the springs by tightening the knobs which is also called as tuning the guitar in this example we'll run two cases to compare how the presence of stress changes the way the strings vibrate we'll use simulations for this comparison the model is set up such that the span of the string remains the same in both the cases here are the animations for both the cases observe how the strings vibrate with very small amplitude in case of large deformation but they vibrate with higher amplitude in case of small deformation this is because when we use large deformation the stiffness of the strings increase due to the stress stiffening and from the relation of natural frequencies we see that this will increase the natural frequencies as a result the strings vibrate with smaller amplitude if we solve this case using small deformation formulation then the stress stiffening is not considered and as a result the natural frequencies do not increase as they are supposed to so the amplitude of vibration remains high or in other words the effect of tuning is not captured this is a good example to show how stress stiffening affects the system's response and why it is important to account for it in studying a system's response finally let's talk about spin softening which is a fourth type of geometric nonlinearity this can be explained using a simple schematic let's consider a dead weight m which is tied to a support using a flexible string of length l not now if we start rotating this weight about this point at a constant angular velocity omega it experiences a centrifugal force of magnitude m omega square l not that acts radially outward now since the string is flexible it tends to stretch out and as a result the length is now increased as a result the centrifugal forces change and so does the length of the string eventually the system comes to a dynamic state of equilibrium in which case the dead weight moved by a displacement u radially outward and the length of the string change to l so the new length of the string is nothing but l equals to l not plus u if you look at the governing equations of this system in its dynamic state of equilibrium this is what it looks like from the previous discussion we plug in the relation of l not into this equation and then take the u term to the left hand side then we end up with this equation focus on this term and you'll notice how the effective stiffness of the system reduces due to the rotation this phenomenon is nothing but spin softening and it's not considered while using small deformation as changes in length of the string is not considered now let's look at the behavior of a fan blade that's rotating at a high speed let's solve this case using both a small and large deformation formulation when you compare the deformations from both the cases you notice that small deformation has a lower value as opposed to the large deformation case for the same angular velocity this implies that large deformation case has softer response compared to small deformation case 
you to spin softening so to conclude using large deformation formulation considers all the four geometric nonlinearities and effectively they either increase or decrease the stiffness of a structure depending on which of these phenomena is dominant the examples that we discussed today gives you an idea of what are the consequences of ignoring those higher order terms in the lagrange strain formulation